Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forged Alliance Forever. Today we're watching another uh, 2 versus 2 matchmaker game. And we got a 20 by 20 map. The Drunken Sailor's Dance. So <clears throat> Some of you might be familiar with this map. It was pointed out to me at some point that there's, you know, basically a mini sentence clutch here in the middle of the map. So let's introduce the players first. Uh, we got Ariko here. And he's Aeon. He's playing with Heartzer. And he is also Aeon. Both the players just under 1600. I'm not sure if this is... I think this is actually their matchmaker rating. And on the bottom team we have Morax. As Seraphim playing with Mimics as UEF. So Mimics, the highest rated player in the game, just by a slight amount. Not sure, you know, if these guys are match or queuing together or I imagine there's well actually no, I have no idea. They might be solo queuing. They might be searching together, I don't know. Well, these are the teams we have, so Morax. Marx interestingly actually made a remake of this map called the Drunken Beatles Dance, if I'm not mistaken, so not sure why this particular version is in ladder instead of his version, but there you go. Second air, of course, it's a 20 by 20 map. You don't really need uh, land factories in your main base of the opening, obviously, because everybody is very far away from each other so a Rico doing something strange which is not actually walking to the hydro I think if a, if a hydro is this close you should definitely walk towards it also then you can get better adjacency with your air factory than this 5p gen adjacency you can get hydro and power generator adjacency bit of a lack of mass here now he's moving very quickly to the next hydro. You definitely want to get the second hydro very quickly. As the hydro is very efficient compared to T1 pigeons. So we already got an inti out. We actually have three scouts from Harzer. And the inties are slightly idle. You definitely want to make a, you know, adjust the... One reason you want to adjust the rally point so that you don't end up with idle units in your base and you can see because there's idle units in the base uh, Morix's first transport can get to middle for free no danger whatsoever except from perhaps the bomber that's coming from Harzer now a lot of inties pouring across the map Morix actually chooses to drop all the engineers in the one place which I don't really like Definitely want to be dropping in many different locations. As we can see, there are mexes everywhere on the map. And very spread out. There's not really bases except for the the four spawns on either end. Everywhere else, the mexes are separated quite significantly. Those two inties fly directly past the transport, hit it with maybe two shots, and then continue on their way and the engineers survive and they actually have taken damage from the inties so this is the reason the the transport is alive is that the the engineers actually tanked some of the damage here comes that bomber from Harzer and it misses it misses horribly actually now will it survive it's taken two shots from an inti the inti goes down another inti comes in and the bomber drops a single bomb killing a single ng that's not really enough for that bomber. One NG not going to make a massive difference in middle considering Morax already has almost two factories. And he has a couple of thams out already. So both teams are really focusing heavily on middle. And maybe to the detriment of the rest of their expansion. Mimics taking his 
main base expansion. Nobody on the islands? Actually, no. On the small islands, we have Ariko taking this one. And already a PD, okay. Rico drops to the to the middle here to the choke point and rushes up a PD. Uh, but Morex quickly has some Zooey's out. So that PD not likely to last too long. I don't see any uh, upgraded mechs just yet. I see a lot of uh, air build power coming up. And people continuing to drop. That's a ghetto gunship, or rather, it's well, it's a, it's a ghetto gunship with just one lab on it, and it's managed to kill two engineers that had been dropped to this island. So <laughs> that's extremely effective. Might be time to drop that lab off. The transport is not going to survive, but at least the the flare could. Flare taking a bit of damage, and you can see the flare regening actually. It has a veterancy already, but unfortunately, it will die with the transport. That's a lot of inties from Ariko, and is he saving his PD? No, he's not. Some Aurora from both of these players, just slightly too late with uh, killing that Fobo. So, total air control for the top team. Bottom team, however, well, they have a little bit of economy here from Mimics. Now, can the top team actually make good use of their air control? That's, that's the next question. They have the air control. But the bottom team is still using transports. And if they can manage to drop around the place without getting shot down... Then what really has the air control done for the top team? Not much, I would say. As we see Morax heading over here to uh, replace the engineers he lost. Mimics heads to Mexes in the north. That's a dead transport, actually. He has already lost. Wow, a transport with four engineers on board in this position. He lost already. That's... Uh, that's quite significant damage. And uh, now we're going to have an NG war, are we? And the A on NG is going to win. Harzer does a good job there. And there's so many in so many inties here for Harzer. There's, there's a million inties for the top team. But I don't see any bombers. So really no damage dealing units being produced at the air factories which is a bit disappointing now we do have a t2 air factory up already which is not surprising actually both of them got t2 air so and a, a commander being dropped to the middle hello well that's a bit interesting i don't know why he's dropping to the middle it seems quite extreme and actually where in the middle is he going to drop right to the front line by the looks of it does he have an upgrade I sincerely hope he has an upgrade he does not okay now I would class that as a gigantic risk <laughs> that's that's how I would see that I would see that as putting a weak commander on the front line not really putting a strong unit on the front line we're putting a weak and vulnerable commander on the front line. So you can see Marx has some upgraded mechs here. He is... Yeah, he's just going to get some naval production up. Mimix was very quick with the navy. But hasn't invested in submarines. And therefore can't raid some of these underwater mechs. So that's a little bit disappointing. I think this is definitely a map where some early submarines can be good and we can see Ariko has one but uh, it's it's a little bit idle oh he's very forward with this naval production that's that's a bit too far forward for my liking Morex takes this island he hasn't got both the mexes but he does have defenses and a factory 
and the left side is very uh <laughs> well nobody's worried too much about the left side apparently as it remains on take and uh Arico Arico dropped to middle and then made the double gun so okay at least he's not stepping forward with uh, an up unupgraded commander I think he realized it might be a bad idea uh Here we get to see the Zooey's versus Aurora. <laughs> the Zooey's are really, really good versus Aurora. Especially when you just attack move the Aurora. You can't really attack move with Aurora against artillery. They will all die. The AoE is too great. The range advantage is not in your favor versus artillery. It's in the favor of the Arties, obviously. And Double Gun Commander arrives, but all of the Aurora have been lost at this point. Which means there's no support, and we can see, say, this is we 4 kills, 200 mass killed. And if he's not dodging, then he's going to lose a lot of HP himself. Still utter air dominance, but where are the gunships? Of course, there's no T2 fighter bomber, unfortunately, for Aeon, but where is... Where are the gunships? We definitely could have seen seen multiple gunships around the place. This would be a good target, although there is an anti-air. Uh, wow, look at this. And <laughs> static flak in the base, a lot of anti-air. Marx is prepared. <clears throat> Maybe over-prepared for the... for the air because there's no gunships but there is an artillery drop now surely these units came from the middle this might be the transport that dropped off the commander now he did not fill the transport fully so it's questionable whether he'll be able to kill what he's aiming to kill but fervors do have insane damage output and there goes a t2p gen for mimics it will be rebuilt rebuilt very quickly so not too painful i'm sure he will well he's not even stalling probably because morex is overflowing a bit of power yep so really not very painful at all no so yeah this uh, sometimes power snipes are maybe overvalued this is one of those cases where it wasn't really that effective it still did damage though that's for sure Oh, Rico. One of the issues playing a 20x20 20 20 map, but your commander on the front line like this is... Uh, well, obviously you're very vulnerable if you ever lose air to an air snipe, but also... You, you just have to place a lot of focus on microing your commander, which may make other parts of the game suffer. So we see there he's losing some HP, probably maybe because he's also trying to do drops while managing his economy, while upgrading factories and such. You know, places a lot of <laughs> a lot of strain on your attention. But he is doing quite fine and this is a nice drop. Actually a blaze dropped. And that static flak, which is supposed to defend against air, is obviously completely incapable of stopping a transport that drops out of range of it. And it will die for free and so will many mexes. Not sure why a blaze was dropped with the fervors. Seems like just more fervors would be <laughs> more effective. But uh, you know, the blaze, you know, it's doing something. It's struggling to fight a transport, but it's doing something. Another static flight. Wow, there's so many static defenses from Morex that don't really seem very effective. And a pigeon going down, and there's no reclaim of the factory of the pigeon, so it explodes, even damages the p. Uh, PD almost kills it quite a nice drop a very very nice drop and another one from Hartzer this time well you, again the, <laughs> the the blazes are really not the the unit to bring here there's a PD and all oh, the fervors actually escaped so he can actually kill this 
But the mech marines are coming. <laughs> maybe maybe put them on a ghetto and he can uh, clean this all up easily. Now the blazes show their strength as they're gonna they're gonna mow down the mech marines. <laughs> PD, Radar, T2 Max, all dead, more drops coming, Aurora, f somehow, <laughs> he's, he's sending Aurora across this pond here, that's a bit slow. And T3 Air is up for Mimics, but he does not have T3 P Gen, he's about to start that, he has a nice spot to build it in here. Another drop lands, Fervors and more Blazes. And he's going to even take out an energy storage. That's quite a nice target. PD is being spammed very quickly. This is delaying the, the T3 P gen a great deal. And I, that P gen is going to explode as well. Oh, saved at the last moment. T3 engineer may go down, which is also not the cheapest of units. Oh, another P gen going to go down. Okay. And again, saved by Mimics. Good reaction. But how is he going to afford the T3 P gen without these T2 P gens? I think he's going to have to remake maybe one P gen. Of course, we saw him. Oh, Morax is actually making his T3 P gen. He now has no overflow from his teammate to help complete this. So this is going to be a very painful end to the construction of that. He's just going to have to power through. Meanwhile, in the middle, there's a million arties for Oriko, and he's taking out all the factories from the bottom team in the middle, taking total map control now as they're pushing on the left side. Oh, even a Hydra. That, that Hydra is actually going to hurt to lose. Although, perhaps Morax will finish this P gen just in time to overflow a lot to his team. And uh, T3 air for both players on the bottom team. The top team have yet to start their T3 P gen. Although Arico does have uh, the factory completed. So, also the Navy is certainly better for the bottom team. We can see Morax has, you know, quite a few frigates. Arico really just has. Well, he has this one factory which is under fire and he has torpedo bombers. Torpedo bombers is not going to be able to do much once uh, Mark starts making those ASF. He already has one out. At least one. Oh wow, more drops coming. Gunships arriving to take out T2 Maxes and they're doing so successfully. That's two dead T2 Maxes. No, actually this one was not upgraded. But I'm guessing it was probably on the way to being upgraded, if I had to guess. Static flag fires a random shot and then stops firing. I'm not sure if maybe the gunships are just slightly out of range now. ASF is sent in after the gunships, but it's going to die to the Inties. Oh, nice overcharge from Morax. But he is taking significant damage. Another T2 Max goes down. The Blazes will die. Eventually, but he's, he's, he's not going to save this uh, T2 Max here. Gunship coming in <laughs> from Morax as well. And, uh, wow, he's lost he's lost so much economy to th these attacks. Here's another dead Max here. Not sure how that died. So, Morax taking a lot of damage. And he's, he, you know, there's there wasn't that much reclaim actually left. I mean, certainly some gunships and things. Some of this was his already and some blaze wrecks left so some reclaim to help him back to uh, to get his his eco back but uh, painful losses there here we see mass storage being built before t2 max oops t3 pigeon is really not moving along very quickly we're at oh the eco the eco is very poor for a rico i mean they've They've done well to take the map control, but now their eco is suffering, the navy is suffering. And uh, these T2 attacks and T1 attacks are not going to be too effective anymore. 
is a recoil under attack from a T1 sub here? He's try he's trying to build a T1 max. He should have finished it to be honest. It's only one one submarine. But of course both players in the bottom team have T2 T3 air, so he's extremely vulnerable now. Even even walking away here is is scary. It's gonna take him a while. I'm surprised the sub didn't follow. And there's another sub in the area, so decent amount of damage could have been done by these two subs. Not a huge amount, but something to make you a little bit scared. Move ping given there. I'm not sure, maybe... Oh, yeah, they're trying to spot the commander. I'm pretty sure that's what Morex is doing here with these, uh, with these frigates. ACU spotted, but I don't think they'll be able to kill him. I don't see any torpedo bombers really from the bottom team. Well, here's one. One is not going to be sufficient. T3 air is up. T second T3 pigeon seems very ambitious considering the amount of mass that Ariko has available. Hearts are struggling massively for energy resources quite late to T3 air and also lacking power you can't you know T2 T2 pigeons works for sentence because you're you know you're making T3 air at 10 minutes that's a that's a TML at the back of the back of the base and there goes the T3 pigeon for mimics oh my god I have TMD says mimics Well, this TMD, this one I'm sure was just built after this exploded, I think. I don't know, well, this one looks to be slightly out of position, I guess. It's obviously not in the way of the, the TML, but perhaps this is just uh, UEF TMD problems here. Looks like Mimics is losing a lot of navy on Hearts or side of the map. And uh, <laughs> the entire air force of the top team, Inties, Swifties, and ASF are chasing after this one spy plane, which of course can outrun them all. <laughs> so they <laughs> Rico has realized that and stopped chasing. Gunships from Morex, it doesn't seem very effective. Kills a few units, but overall it's not very effective. But now he may go in and, and kill the ASF of Arico, which is very important. And the bottom team is going to have such a... Well, it does already have such a huge advantage in the air. They need to start using that. That's a T2 transport's being constructed here. The T3 pgen is replaced. The TML is dead. A little bit of mass left there as well. And uh, second T3 pigeon coming for Morax at the moment. I hear a flak firing rapidly. But I have no idea where it is. Sierico's mass. Expanding his economy in this expansion. A, quite a decent navy for, for Hartzer, but how's his eco? Where is his... He, well, he has made another T2 Pija. So that's good. He has a T3 NG. He doesn't actually have anywhere to place... Oh, that's a bit sad, isn't it? I think he has enough overflow, probably, to... <laughs> Yeah, he does. He could he could actually kill this pigeon, build his T3 pigeon there. That would be the best course of action. Now, if you're communicating with your teammate, then you'll know that you know you can't afford to do that. If not, it's a bit risky. As that overflow may run out, that's a T1 drop there of six units in the middle. And Arico has actually built a decent air force. I really feel like the bottom team needs to just start making, you know, make some broadswords. 
take the middle with broadswords. Don't forget the drops and things. Win air, make some broadswords, take the middle, and uh, then you know do some other raiding if possible with broadswords. You you only need a couple, really. I mean, yeah, there's some flak here, but without shields, they're useless. Also, you can just fly around, snipe the HQ, snipe everything else. When the flak show up, eventually you can dodge them and if the bottom team don't have air control then I don't know what's going on because they're two versus one on air still no T3P gen here for Harzer so mm, I, I'm not sure why they're not really using their T3 air advantage that seems to be the main advantage they've had throughout the game Harzer mimics just fighting back and forth T1 navy not, not very interesting <laughs> you know they run forward they run back they donate mass they donate mass back to each other this is a terrible fight for mimics Harzer should turn around and fight this get these units in the back involved in the fight yeah now now he's fighting and now he's retreating. Really seems like he could kill this navy, but you know, I guess if he fights in this position, that reclaim may not be available to him. And fighting navy is a bit scary when you don't think you have air control because, you know, maybe you win the fight, you have some units left over and they get torped. And then you have no units left over, all the reclaim is gone. And, uh, well, you're, you don't feel too good about that. Main thing we're lacking, guys. Do you know? Oh, big drop from Mimics. Now, this, these are the kind of drops we want. These T1 drops in the middle. I sleep. These ones, though. Oof. He's going to lose every T2 mechs here. If he, if he micros the Lobos a bit, uh, also just to note, Lobos survive a uh, Aeon Bomb, <laughs> even without veterancy. These ones now have veterancy, so they easily survive. <clears throat> this guy could survive a, a Seraphim Bomb right now. This is a brutal drop. Absolutely brutal. I mean, Harster's Eco wasn't looking too good I, anyway. Now, now he's in a deep hole. That he has to get himself out of that. That hurts so much. Ouch. So these are all T2. And the one that wasn't T2. I think was very almost. Very close to being upgraded to T2. So. <laughs> that's that's a disgusting drop of Lobos there. Excellent job from Mimics. And. Uh. That's a huge boost to the bottom team. A huge boost. Feels like Arico's been stalling 150 mass for most of the game. What I was getting to earlier, before this huge drop. Well, what's, <laughs> what's this for? <laughs> that might have been there a long time ago. I don't know. But I don't remember seeing it. Uh, yeah, what... What we're missing in this game is the most powerful unit. It's the T3 mechs. Who's got one? I don't think anyone has one. And this, oh, this poor cruiser. Under attack. Can it escape? Seems unlikely. Ooh, nope. That's a nope. And this destroyer needs to submerge very quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be dying to Aeon frigates. You hate to see it. Oh, it's dead. It's very dead, and this is an extremely good attack from from Rico. But now he's going in with his ASF, and I don't think he really wants to do that. Oh, how's the micro? It's unorthodox. It is unorthodox, but Rico is getting crushed. That was a very bad idea. And we may be about to see what I was talking about earlier. 
with the whole, you know, sending your navy in to win the fight and then getting torped into oblivion. Uh, especially after you send your ASF in alone. I mean, God forbid Mimics was there with his ASF. I mean, he has arrived since, but... That was a very bad attack. Now this T2 Naval HQ is going down and it's going to go down with a destroyer almost fully completed as well. So that's just bonus damage for all these frigates. These AM frigates are <laughs> have done an insanely good job. The destroyer has been torped however. And a lot of damage was done but a lot of mass was left. On the top side, looks like Harzer is winning the Navy. Look at the reclaim. These guys have just been committing to fights that they have no business being in. I mean, mainly Mimics. He's the one getting crushed here. Aeon Frigates crushing. There's a Seraphim. There's UEF. Oh, Mimics was actually given some some Seraphim Frigates there. At least one, I would say. At least one. And the top team winning two naval battles there, but... Well, on this side, Morax has access to the Reclaim, but he has lost his T2 HQ, which he needs to replace very quickly, which he's actually doing, with even with the, the assistance of T3 NGs, which is good. It doesn't really look like anyone's trying to secure this 10,000 mass field that has been created purely from frigates. Very, I mean... A single NG... That's a dead teacher transport. Oh, air fight over a an Aeon cruiser with what looks like a small portion of Morax's air. Oh no, he actually just lost a lot of his air, it seems, because that's all he has left and he's still fighting over this cruiser. Ah, oh, the Aeon cruiser is getting so much damage. Look at this. Ouch. But that's a lot of torps. That is so many torpedoes. I'm not sure who has... Well, actually, no. Harzer does not have as many ASF at all. I've been tricked by Inties and Swifties here. And here comes the air fight. There are three flex over here as well. Four flex. Uh, it looks like Mimics should win it, but I'm sure his ASF are wasting a lot of shots on Inties and, and Swifties here. As we can see, those dropping, and that's that may be allowed Harzer to win. Also, a couple of Restores arrived at the right time. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, the teams are not working together in these air fights, which is very, well, disadvantageous to, to both of them. <clears throat> with some teamwork in the air fights this could be going a lot differently I've also noticed that Arico doesn't seem to have any T3 Maxes Harzer doesn't seem to have any he's making one now if we look at the bottom team Mimics has one two three he's got three by the looks of it Morax has one two Here's a third one about to complete, a fourth one actually over a third of the way upgraded, so... In terms of T3 mexes, bottom team certainly ahead. Rico does have a lot of nice T2 mexes out on the map. They're quite vulnerable in certain places, but... They are at least using their map control to get those more efficient upgrades. Chicken bots from Morax. How did these get here? I assume they were dropped. They've actually done a lot of damage. Well, hard to see what's going to happen here. Certainly the top team should be in a good position. But they need maybe a few more T3 Maxes. That's a Continental. Dropping Pillars and Lobos and a couple of Strikers there. And oh, the Continental goes down. Hearts or Snipes it. That's an expensive, expensive plane to lose. 
But guess what else is expensive to lose? All of these ASF for free. Now he turns and fights, and if Mimics could, keeps microing. Yeah, Mimics crushing the ASF there. I think I would take that trade. If I was Mimics. Oh, another very strange air maneuver over a cruiser into Morax's ASF. And oh no. Oh no. Morax lets a few get away, but takes quite a lot of them out. Keep going, my friend. Oh no, he sent half them in. And now he turns away. And he's gonna lose some for free. Oh, okay, Orico doesn't follow him. Okay, so we're all over the place here with the ASF. Hey, T3 Max. Rico's found the T3 Max upgrade button. That's going to be a great boon to his chances in this game. That's a lot of obsidians arriving at this base. Okay, T2 attack at 32 minutes. Let's go obsidians. <laughs> Interesting, they might actually make it uh, a little bit further. Probably not too much further, and again, the more and more torps. You can see Arico getting pushed back here. Oh, he's lost the destroyer there. Ouch. And the torps are abandoned to their fate. Although, somehow they get another pass, and at this rate, they may even kill this destroyer. No, the ASF finally... Begin to fly in the right direction. Oh, big air fight. Mimics, I don't know why he's here. I have literally no clue why he would send his ASF in. Oh, there it is. There's the reason. Because he's sending in a strap bomber to attack Hartzer. And, uh, nice kill there. P gen and a T2 Max and some storage. But overall, not the most effective. He's lost a huge amount of ASF. He's lost the strap bomber, which has crash landed. Where exactly? Oh, there. How did... Wait, what? Did he really turn at the last moment that quickly or... Well, anyway. He's left quite a lot on the on the ground there for Harzer to pick up, so not really an effective attack. The Obsidians just marched through this expansion. He should leave one behind to try and finish this uh, T2 Max, but he's already killed three T2 Maxes. He's going to kill more. This is ridiculous that this obsidian attack has just crushed brutally. But there you go. This attack is more effective, <laughs> effective than the uh, T3 air attack that we just wa witnessed. That's a nuke defense from Morax. Okay, he's building nuke defense. Mimics uh, isn't. Is there a nuke? That That is a nuke. And it the launcher is halfway completed. Now it's pretty low eco to be making that. As we can see. <laughs> slight, slight master. Bit, uh, bit ambitious, but somehow these restorers have been kind of all around the map. They've done pretty well for themselves. Bit of air staging wouldn't go astray. Harzer needs a little bit more focus on the reclaim here because, uh, well, look, Mimics is sucking up all this frigate reclaim from about 15 minutes ago, finally, and there's reclaim all over this map at this point. 60,000 mass, like, yeah, and, uh, yeah, Morax is doing well here with the naval reclaim. <laughs> these Ilshis are still, oh no, these are different Ilshis. Looks like they are simply being walked forward. That's a T3 land HQ on the way. Quite slowly, but on the way nonetheless. Mimics with T2 Navy. He's got a few destroyers out. He doesn't have any shield boats. He d uh, it's a SAM quite far forward. Torpedo launchers. A lot of, it, of uh, investments made here. And he's also replacing the eco that he lost to uh, Obsidians. Another Continental, this time dropping two T2 Engineers to the middle. Morex, the 
lowest rated player in this game leading the way in economy leading the way in reclaim well leading the way in total mass gained not leading the way in uh, generated mass at the moment i think i think it think mimics might be or maybe that's reclaim boosting him i'm not sure but mimics yeah mimics looks to be doing pretty well now in terms of his eco but uh, once again there is a nuke completed a nuke launcher is completed now the question is whether this is ever going to load okay Rico is balancing his economy to make sure that this loads if you stall mass or energy this missile will load extremely slowly and uh, you will be waiting far too long for it to load so he does need to maintain some at least a small amount of mass in his bank so right now this bar is basically not going to move with this mass stall. So he needs he needs to balance his eco to get that to make that building that launcher worth it at all. To, so much naval production has died for Harzer before he finally decides to you know send the troops in to defend. I mean seems like he he's arrived a little bit late here but nonetheless he has arrived now the question is can he win the fight he needs to focus on the destroyers as they have a lower HP per mass than the the frigates you need to take out the destroyers quickly deal with the frigates afterwards the and that's another air fight where mimic seems to just be suiciding ASF and believing that the trade is worth it to get a drop away that's a terrible drop however continental goes down that's an extremely expensive unit by itself it was carrying four lobos and a striker i believe so not really worth sacrificing your entire air force and the continental just to try and land that thing and uh, he's also losing navy so that was uh yeah not a great move there by Mimics. Not a great move at all. Just just trying to force things to happen there and it backfired massively. Uh, <laughs> okay, this <laughs> the SMD is uh, being loaded by Morix. Morix seems to be aware of the, the nuke anyway. Okay, he has Manuk is pinged and marked. Uh, Mimics, perhaps this has is what has <laughs> affected Mimics so grievously. He's he's very worried about this nuke. He hasn't built a shield around his strategic missile defense, which is one of those things that <laughs> will will bite you in the maybe in this game maybe not in this game but you always build at least just build a t2 shield you know around your extremely expensive absolutely necessary structure this thing is seven and a half k Costs a similar amount to build the missile inside, and the shield costs 600 mass, and will multiply the HP of that structure by a lot. How much is this? 12k HP or something for a shield for 600 mass? Shields are pretty good. You know, they're pretty good. It looks like Arico has been completely crushed in the Navy now by Morax. And uh yeah, the Navy looking terrible for the for the top team at this point, but they have constructed solaces. Okay. Arico with the solaces, he's gonna quickly take out these destroyers. I don't see any cruisers, which means basically no potential for damage. The destroyers have a very difficult time. Uh obviously shooting above flat ground because they have lasers this is a uh, this is a lot of ASF for Morax 
But similarly, a lot of ASF for Arico. Now, does Arico have his teammates ASF? Is that how he has so many? Oh, he probably has been given most of the most. Harter looks to have given most of his ASF away. He only has eleven. I don't think he just had eleven there. Another t <laughs> the Continentals. Let's see, let's see. How many does Rico have? He's got 121. Not bad. 124, almost exactly equal in uh, in Air Forces. Rico and, ha and uh, Morex. Rico is going to fly over some cruisers. No, he's not. He's turning around. That's so many solaces. That's extremely expensive. And forward. Sam's being built by Mimics. Not a bad idea. Nuke is loaded. Why is it not launched? Oh my god, he hasn't launched the, the nuke. And it's loaded. And the SMD is, is very close to loaded for Mimics. He's also not stalling, so he should easily be able to load that in time. Why are there... Why are Obsidians crushing on, the, on this side of the map? I don't understand why T2 land is still being used, but somehow it's working. Voltus come in and attack. Doesn't seem like that's really necessary considering there's so many cruisers here and no defenses against them. Oh, here comes the air fight. We have to see this. Is Marx watching? He is, he is, he is. Okay. Tighter circles can be achieved, I promise you. But. Now nobody's looking at each other. Harzer arrives. Harzer's watching. Mimics is not watching. Oh no, Morax, that was not a good turn. Keep going. <laughs> okay, round and round and round we go. There's even Flak coming in for Rico. That was a better turn. Oh, look at that for a good turn for Morax. Now he's getting it. Keep going, my dude. Oh my god, Morax just crushed there at the end you can see <laughs> that uh, yeah once you see once you get a good turn suddenly it looks easy so good air fight from Morex now he probably should he should have cleaned up the rest of the ASF there's now a massive reclaim field here of ASF in the water and guess what? Morex has naval control. Now Morex should probably... Well, oh god, there's so much mass here. Might be time to help out Mimics, although it looks like Mimics doesn't really have much need for help. He's just taking his time pushing. He needs, you know, a few shields and uh, cruisers and he, he should just walk through here. That is a huge amount of strats though from Mariko. He, he is saving that nuke. He wants... He wants to take out the SMDs. Morax has almost two missiles loaded in his one. Still no shield here. I actually, you know what? This is not this is not a SMD sniping strat run. This has to be a calm sniping strat run. Now unfortunately they are Aeon strats, so they're quite dodgeable. Quite dodgeable. Question is where the ASF going to be? Now Morix has ASF next to his commander. He is under a shield. He has Sams and Flax and things. That's good. Mimix does not have a single shield in his base. He does not have a Sam in his base by the looks of it. He doesn't have a shield in his SMD. He doesn't have upgrades. Harzer should not send his ASF here. Now this, this can give away that they're strats if the enemy team sees this. Unfortunately, they don't have, although they have middle control, they've only just gotten it. And so they don't have uh, an Omni sensor in middle. So actually a lot of the map is quite blind for them. Marx is sending in his Navy to help out his teammate. They look to completely crush Navy. Manuk still not loaded or still not launched. The strats are just chilling. They are chilling.
Spy planes overhead. Searching for targets. The nukes. The nukes? The strats. Begin flying. What are they targeting? Surely the commander. And he's now under a T3 shield. And he's building a second T3 shield. <laughs> the SMD, I have to say, is definitely not under a shield. And th there's the attack marker. He's go he's going to kill this. He is definitely killing this. Strats fly directly over a base here. T3 land has finally arrived. That probably should have happened a long time ago. From both of the players on the top. But look at this. Yep, nice shield you got there. <laughs> and the strat is launched, or the nuke is launched. The strats continue on to their next target. They don't have a target, though. There's no spy planes here. Oh, he's targeting the commander. Oryx commander. Who, he is under two shields. All the strats drop. This is not going to be enough damage, though. He gets through the shields, but that is all. And look at this donation. Mmm. Mmm. That's a lot of mass. However, Mimix is losing his entire base. All of these P gens, all of this production, the T3 Mexes. Here comes the nuke, but on his shores, there's Othams. The T3 land for Borax has uh, has arrived in Rico's base. The nuke. Wipes out everything. Actually, no, there's two T3 Mexes left. But okay, most of everything is dead. But the T3 land is here. T3 land is going to absolutely destroy this base. There's nothing to defend against it. Now, he, okay, he does have... Well, he doesn't have range gun anymore as he has the T3 upgrade. The cruisers are going to really struggle to get through here. Versus Aeon TMD. Even versus other factions TMD, they're going to struggle to... Nice overcharge there. Two Autumns go down. This Pigeon should have been a major target, but it was not. The Autumns maybe wasted their chance a little bit. They have gotten certainly good damage, but perhaps it could have been more. He can head north and head towards the T3 Mexes now. But Hartzer and Arico call it there. I mean, they've lost. Well, if Rico's lost almost everything, Hearts are lost, uh, well, the Navy is completely crushing, and, I mean, if you lose Navy that hard on this map, there's not really a way back without sniping, and the, the snipe failed. Perhaps more strats could have been built. Perhaps, but, uh, yeah, Morex, Morex really carried this game, i got to say. Mimix did, did quite well. Few, few too many air suicides, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Morix did really well in this game. Uh, Rico with a nice try with the nuke. A good snipe on the SMD, which was <laughs> just, you know, almost under a shield. But uh, yeah, the nuke came too late. At that point, the, the bottom team had actually really taken control of the game. The middle was taken there was damage done mimics with the nice drop here did a lot of damage to hearts hurt and overall quite a nice game uh, hope you enjoyed hope you're enjoying uh, 2v2 tmm hope you're all playing it and a bit of ladder as well so thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you all in the next video bye guys